So I just started the recording. Tonight's team call is going to be on social media tips, and we're going to kind of all pitch in and talk about things that are work best for us and how we find people, how we attract people, how we find new people, and how we engage with them. And then also creating quality followers. And that's basically not just being like, I have 10,000 Instagram followers, but being like, I have people that actually comment on my stuff because followers is nothing if you're not creating friendships. So, um, and that's something that I'm really big on. And I um, have so many people that I have in the last year built really great friendships with. But you also need to get to a point where you're not just friends forever, <laughs> like on Facebook, and that you're actually inviting them. Like I have one girl that tags me every day in some type of German Shepherd post. She has lost 25 pounds, is amazing. Um, and she, I haven't talked to her recently about coaching. And I just thought that today. I'm like, what are you doing? Like she is your person. She loves everything you say. Like you guys have so much in common. Why are you not following up with her? So sometimes I get so sucked in in loving the friendships that I build. I'm like, oh, why am I not inviting this person? So that's the kind of difference between, you know, you really, you really enjoying being friends with people that you meet through social media and then wanting them to be a part of your team. So um, I want, and you guys feel free to use the chat and stuff too. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Melissa just said, Elsie just went face first into the dishwasher. I'll do my best to be on, but she's pretty upset. <laughs> it's quite the tap, quite the feet. <laughs> um, okay, so best t tips for social media. First, who follows a posting schedule? Raise your hand. Okay, so I would love for you guys to talk about what the difference you saw when you weren't using a posting schedule and now when you are or how it helped you, or how it helps you um, be less stressed. So unmute yourself and just kind of, we can all talk and, and say, so we can tell the people, tell people the importance of having a posting schedule. When I started, I didn't have one, and you kept saying how important they were. So I, I went back and looked through all my posts, and it was like, healthy recipe, workout, healthy recipe, beach body, workout, healthy recipe. And it was just, I wasn't word vomiting beach body, but I was like, I went from posting hardly ever to all the time about working out and eating healthy. So then I created my posting schedule that has um, healthy recipes. I will like twice a week, I'll just ask a general question about something like about a makeup or about a just something other than working out. And I get tons of responses from those. And then I have um, my dogs. And then I have when I schedule a post to ask about a challenge group. So it really kind of mixes up and gets a little more of my life in there. And also, I don't have to think about it. Like before I would lay in bed for 20 minutes on Pinterest going, what should I post today? I think I just posted that quote. Or did I post that quote? Maybe I didn't post that quote. Mm -hmm. now I look at it and say, you know, okay, Thursday night, it's a coach post. Tomorrow morning, it's a recipe. And I might mix it up. I might not be completely strict to what I post if something pops up that I think is fun to share. But I don't have to sit there for half an hour anymore going, I don't know what to post, or did I post about that yesterday, or it just, it makes it a no-brainer, yeah. and then it makes the posting three to eight, or three times a day, like, I don't even have to think about it. Yeah, and my issue was I was posting too much, and I was spending too much of my time thinking about posts, and making posts, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I was really productive today. No, you made seven posts today, <laughs> but what did you do in terms of invites? So, we yeah. I love social media so much that I have the issue with wanting to spend too much time on posting. And so that posting schedule has really helped me like, girl, you don't need to post nine times today. <laughs> um, so when you do have extra time to work the business, that can also be an issue because you're just like, I want more followers, but that's like too much is also not great either. Um, so yeah, so definitely if you haven't yet put a posting schedule together. Did you freeze? Did I freeze? I don't know. Am I frozen to anybody? 
Oh, it's just you, girlfriend. <laughs> you look frozen, Danielle. <laughs> My internet usually sucks, so it just makes me happy when it's not mine. Um, and I'm a brat. But yeah, so um, making a posting schedule and you can, <laughs> sorry, you can um, take a look at my post like it's your job group and I have a sample posting schedule there. I have so many people are frozen right now. So many frozen faces. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, and you can use that as a guide, but totally feel free to change it. But make sure that you also are making sure that you're putting in coach sprinkle posts. And I encourage you to do it once a day. It doesn't have to be like, join my team, fill out this form, join my team. But making sure that you're like best job ever, like kind of things like that. Um, and, you know, just kind of saying like, if you feel thankful for something, talk about it. Stop it, I can't even <laughs> take these comments <laughs> about Danielle's face. <laughs> um, Okay, I need to focus. Can somebody, let's, I'm going to go to Debbie because I can't focus. I'm, Debbie, <laughs> take another drink, girlfriend. Um, Debbie is going to talk about um, <laughs> her box of wine. <laughs> Debbie's going to talk about sharing her journey and sharing her story and how she does that every freaking week. People do not get sick of seeing that. You have new people, you have new eyes on your stuff all the time. And it's really important. It's something I actually suck at. So I'm going to have Debbie talk about it because I don't do it enough. You're muted. Do you want me to unmute you? Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I think one of my strong points is the sharing of the story because I, I don't know, I'm very in touch with like my emotions and my feelings. And sometimes like throughout the day, like something will just spark something in me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like that brought me back to a time in the past. And I'm going to share about what I'm feeling right now. So I don't personally have a schedule with it. I just kind of go with the flow and share what I feel in the moment. Um, but I do this in different ways. So sometimes I will share just randomly, like, I don't know, today I was listening to personal development and it's actually really good. Um, I, it's not a book. It's kind of like a talk. The guy talks a lot. It's called Maximum Confidence anyway. So he was talking about um, how golf balls like originally were, had like a smooth surface, but they realized that over time, like when they would get hit and dinked, they actually like flew farther and faster. So they started actually making those imperfections in the balls. So for some reason, like that strikes something within me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I experienced this and this and this and this in my life and all of those things made me stronger. So I made a post about it today because it was just something that I really connected with. And I got a lot of, you know, comments and likes on that because it wasn't like, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I struggled with this and then an invite to a challenge group. It was just like, you know, a random sharing of my story and, giving something with a positive message to people that they can relate to and people see that. So either I'll do it that way or I'll do it with an invite to a challenge group or a coach, you know, to be a coach. So I do that in different ways, as I said, but I do it at least once a week because I'm always having new people on my Facebook. So it's okay to talk about, you know, the same thing. I mean, not every week, but like you want to make sure that if you shared something in the past and it got like a lot of interaction that you should probably share it again because there's a lot of people that didn't see that. So maybe like once a month, you know, share the same thing. Um, what else? I wrote down all these notes and of course I forget everything. Um, but 
For me, like I said, I kind of just like do things on a whim, but what I tell all of my coaches to do is to make a list of everything that has been significant in their life. So for instance, for me, like, I don't know if any of you saw my post today, but like I was adopted, my parents um, are divorced. Um, my mom died when I was 19. I had like been emotionally abused. I've had eating disorders. I mean, so literally go through your life, like from day one <laughs> till now and write down every single thing that has impacted you um, I, in a negative way or a positive way. And then write out like your feelings and experiences with that and then share that along the way. Like you don't have to all at once, like share your whole life story. Cause nobody's going to sit there and read that for like three hours. Right. So like you just share little tidbits of your life and it's so important to do that consistently because we all know that people relate to emotions. They don't relate to products, right? So if we're sitting there and we're just like, hey, like I have this Shakeology and it's amazing. You totally should try it. Nobody is going to care, <laughs> like at all. Nobody will care. If you pair that though with an experience, like a true deep emotional experience, People are going to connect with that and then trust you when you tell them that you have something that can help them. So that's why it's so important to share your story and to not always do it with like an invite to a challenge group or an invite to whatever right away, because you have to let people have a chance to trust you and, and know that you're an actual human being before you go and recommend like a certain product that you believe will help them. Um, what else? What else? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess just be as vulnerable as you can be. And I know so many people like come to me and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. You know, I, I don't know what people are going to think about me. I have so much family on Facebook. I don't want them to see all these struggles that I've been through. And, and it's just really hard for me. And, and what I tell them is, you know what, like I have that too. Like I have family on Facebook that didn't know half the crap that I put out there, you know, and I've gotten nothing but positive feedback. Like nobody has ever come to me and said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you told the world that you had an eating disorder. How dare you do that? You know, like I've had family come to me and be like, wow, I'm so proud of you being able to put that out there to help others get through that. So, I mean, I could tell you like, don't be afraid, but I don't know, just do it. <laughs> And you'll see, like, and even if you don't get a huge response, I, like, can highly doubt you're going to get any negative responses from sharing your true emotions. Um, and the more you do it, the more confident you're going to be doing it, and the more you're going to want to do it. And it's actually pretty healing, in my experience with it, so... Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I remember the first year I was at Smart Success, and Shalene Johnson, and so I had been a coach for about a year, and Shalene Johnson said, your darkest moment is what will shoot you into the stratosphere, and that was something that just, like, hit me like a ton of bricks, because when I think of my darkest moment, that was me trying to hide an eating disorder from my family and making myself throw up multiple times a day, because I thought that was the only thing that I could control, and I remember um, just feeling disgusted and feeling like I literally have, like there's, I was useless. I was worthless and nobody would want me. And that was just where I was at, at that time in my life. And so she had Bo Eason there, who is amazing. If you ever, um, I, he probably has podcasts, but he, um, is amazing. I know one time he, um, did something with Beachbody. He did like a, a free call for people with success club. And then, um, he's been to two of Shalene Johnson's thing and he is so good at sh teaching you how to share your story. 
and he just talks about how it's just so important. Like that's the one thing you have that nobody else has. And that is yours. That is yours to tell. And how dare you not share it with people because you are just, shooting yourself in the foot by not letting other people know that there's other people that struggle just like them. And so I was very much with, um, Debbie, like, you know, not wanting to share it, being nervous. And that's honestly how like my family found out that I had eating disorders in the past. It wasn't like I have an eating disorder now. It was something that was like years prior, but they didn't even know. I never told them they never knew. And they found out through a Facebook post. And like, that's crazy. Like that, like I had such anxiety, but I was, I remember making my before and after photo talking about my transformation while I was sitting in the audience at smart success, because it was on my mind. I was like, I can't do anything else. I need to do this now. <laughs> and being freaked out. And I still remember the very post I met the, that I put together to make it. And I, I just was so nervous and pushing play was one of the best things or pushing post was one of the best things that I have ever done because I got so many people saying I needed that. Like, thank you. Um, so yeah, so, and it doesn't have to be your entire story. It's not like, like I had a girl that has, a, has had a really rough um, background. She's got emotional abuse, physical abuse, literally like everything. And she wanted to put it all in one story. And I was like, nope, that is too much. <laughs> you know, so you can't even, you can't just like blast your whole life. You have to pick a part of your story that you're going to share. And then in the next week you can, you can do another part of that story. So it's not like, here's how screwed up I am. Take it. <laughs> you know, you have to just like do little bits at a time or you'll, people are just be like, Oh my God, I don't even know what to say to that. I'm sorry. You know, so you need to take a part of it and turn it into a positive and turn it into a way that you're going to motivate others through that. But yeah. Um, and Debbie's really great at sharing her journey too about her weight loss journey. She's always sharing that. So if you don't have um, a huge weight loss, you know, success or anything like that, just make sure that you're talking about your internal transformation. And the biggest thing I can say is if you make a before and after or you make something with yourself, do not pick apart yourself in the before photo. Because people want to come to your rescue and say, girl, you look beautiful in the first one. Da, da, da. Do not pick yourself apart. Doing things like beautiful then, beautiful now, but I didn't see it. That's the best way to get your point across because you don't want to be teaching people that if you're 15 pounds heavier than you are now, you're not lovable. That's not the message you want to send. So don't ever pick yourself apart when you're doing before and afters but talk about the internal change. You can say like, yeah, I've, I'm lo I've lost 40 pounds, but if I was still the same girl um, internally today, 45 pounds down that I was then, I still wouldn't like myself. So it's very important to not be critical of your before because people will not like that. <laughs> and I used to do that. Like, look at this heifer on the left. Good thing I don't look like that anymore. And people, I didn't really say that, but <laughs> people are like, <laughs> girl, you're beautiful then. You were never big. Da, da, da. And the, the whole message was missed because they're trying to save me because I was making fun of myself. So just make sure that you're portraying yourself is that, you know, the internal change is more important than the physical. Can I say something? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what I always say, and I think that when I'm always, when I always go to look back at people's introduction coach posts and I still do um, bios for my new coaches but when I do that you know everyone gives me this awesome heartfelt bio and it's awesome to see that and it's awesome to kind of give people a snippet of who you are and where you come from and what brought you to this point but I often like never hear that story again from people so what I always tell people is go back and look at that bio that you gave when you first began coaching and then take it in pieces and then talk about all of the things that have happened in between all of that, that has brought you to where you are now. Because I think that uh, like a one and done story share is 
is never enough. Like you have to kind of take it, spin it backwards, look at it from a different angle and say it again. And I think that, you know, when, since we're always adding new people to social media, there's always someone who hasn't heard your story. And there's always someone who missed it the first 10 times that you told it. So it's important to kind of always go back to those beginning feelings and what brought you to being to be a coach and rediscuss it and you know re rehash it with you know your audience because that's what where your fire was then and don't be like oh I don't know what to talk about because when you gave that bio you you knew where you were going with that so that's always a really good starting place if you're you know you don't really know where to go I love that. And the other thing that, that Debbie said was that it's therapeutic. And I can't agree with that more because I was still not in a great mindset when I signed up as a coach. I still had a ton of self-confidence issues. And then what I do and what I tell people when they don't think that they can be a coach is I say, I felt the same way. And you know what? Those negative thoughts that I had and those things that I told myself, every time I had that thought, and I was comparing myself to somebody else, I would make a post, don't compare yourself to anybody else compared to you yesterday. And so what you're always constantly trying to do, and it's cool because then you'll see an underlying rep repetitive message on your post is whatever negative thoughts that you tell yourself, whether it's you're not good enough, um, this person's better, you should be doing this, like whatever. For me, I'll, you'll see a lot of my posts is you are good enough because that was what I was constantly telling myself. So what so instead of me focusing on that and ignoring it and trying to just work my business i took it as a way to motivate people and then that way i attracted a lot of like-minded people so who here feels like one of the biggest parts of their story is self-confidence issues yeah like attracts like <laughs> so talk about that and Anytime, it doesn't matter where you are in your journey. If you find yourself looking at somebody and saying, oh my gosh, I wish my legs looked like that. T take it and make it into a post about being the best version of yourself. And that's going to attract another person that, and you can even say like, I busted myself today being a total brat and comparing myself to somebody else. And I just, you know, was like, oh my gosh, I wish my legs looked like that. But then I realized that, you know, my legs now look a heck of a lot better than they did a year ago. And I need to be celebrating myself. So that's a big part of you personally and sharing your journey, but then also helping you while you help others. Um, <laughs> I missed the naked bum. What? What is it, uh, Maximum Confidence? Is it a book? You're muted. It's an audio book. Let me show you guys what it looks like. Um, Do you get it on audi Audible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just find the author. Your hands the way you normally fold them when you fold them in your lap. That's and notice right. which thumb you have on top, your right or your left. That's what it looks like. How many of your Who's the author? Um, Jack Canfield. Oh, yeah, he's good. He has um, success principles, too. That's good. Okay. Yeah, it's not like a – I don't think it's a book he wrote. I think it's like a bunch of his seminars kind of, like, compacted. Yeah, some so, of those are usually even better because it's, like, the yeah. best of what they have. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right. So on that note, I have a lot of coaches who say that like their self-confidence and belief in themselves is their limiting belief. And that a lot of times is what kind of hurts them in not being able to move their business forward. So what would you guys recommend PD wise for somebody that kind of needs to get out of their own way? Did you say for personal development? Mm -hmm. um, eat that frog really did it for me. Mm -hmm. Because I, I finally just realized I just have to get up and do it and it, then it's over with. Yep. Because I would be like 8 o'clock at night and I still hadn't worked out or done my invites. But I'd sent all my happy birthdays and I'd posted on Instagram 
-hmm. and I drank my shake. So I did all the easy stuff, but the hard stuff I wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. Debbie says compound effect. You are a badass and, um, girl boss. And I also really, um, have heard good things about the confidence code. Um, I haven't read it myself though, but I've heard that's good. I just finished it. Um, and it's, it's good, but it wasn't my favorite. I think maximum confidence is better. The only thing about the confidence code is that it doesn't really show you how to be more confident. It kind of just shows you scientifically, like why women are less confident than men. Oh, okay. It doesn't really give you so many tools to like combat it. That's why I think maximum confidence is better, in my opinion. Good to know. Um, my, and this might be my absolute favorite book. I just finished it and I'm about to read it again. Um, Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, because it, it's long, but it literally takes you through all the feelings that you would have being a coach or starting your own business or whatever. And just, I think knowing that other people are feeling that way too, and it's not just you is so, so, so important when you're a coach or literally doing anything that's out of the norm. Like it talks about how to handle your family. It talks about how to handle friends. It talks about how to handle fear. And it talks, it like, it literally gives you step by steps. And then when you're done, he says, okay, log on to this for free. And he literally gives you worksheets to go through afterwards. So it's been my favorite book so far. So yeah, I just started that yesterday. You're going to love it. Yay. Um, and then I don't know, Molly typed in a bunch of gibberish. I don't know what, 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 wabasabi on Ted talks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, um, for me, I am very visual. Um, I need kind of something in front of me a lot of times to really, get the point in. I know Alicia was on uh, the call that I did about sharing your story. And uh, we talked about watching TED Talks. Uh, It's free. It's on YouTube. It's literally, I typed it, TED Talks. And that's all it is. You can Google. And it's, um, there's one called Wabi Sabi. Um, And if you are feeling bad about yourself, or if you think you're unworthy of anything, um, if you just don't see a light at the end of the tunnel for you and you need to get yourself out of that mindset, that is the video for you. And um, it's it might make you cry. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's really sad. But it's this woman, and I can't for the life of me think of her name right now, but she is standing in front of the audience telling her story and the way she says it is so eloquent and you know, um, there's a really awesome message behind it. And if you are feeling stuck and like you don't deserve to be promoted with Beachbody, or if you feel like you don't deserve to, uh, actually obtain your why or anything like that, you have to watch it. It will change your life forever. But TED Talks has a bunch of videos. Normally, they're about 15 to 25 minutes long, which is also why I like them, because it's very easy to watch one in one sitting. Um, There's a bunch. And they're not necessarily, like, beach body related, but so far, everything I've watched has really, like, been on point. Yeah, we used to have to watch them in grad school. Like, there's seriously so much stuff. There's, there's all there. You could literally find one for anything. And Simon Sinek, who was at um, Summit last year, and he his book is um, it starts with why. He has a lot of really famous TED talks too. Um, so okay, so I wrote these all down so I can share this in the um, team call on the page too. And for people watching the recording. Um, Nancy said likable social media is good too for people that are new to social media. Um, yeah. And then Debbie said, Les Brown, the power of purpose. So I just want to make sure cause they won't be able to see the chat. Um, all right. So, um, 
what social media tips can you give? So maybe this won't be something that you get a ton out of, but hopefully this recording will be something for new coaches that your coaches will really be help. It will help, bleh, help them. So what would you say some of your biggest social media tips are? Maybe it's something like you found that doesn't work um, or something that you found that does work. So what would you say to new coaches? I started and I created an, an album in my iPhone for, and it's um, unused posts. So if I make something to eat and it looks good, I'll take a picture and throw it in there. Or if I like I'm having a good hair and face day, I'll take a couple sweaty selfies and I'll throw them in there. And then I will, um, whenever I need something, if I don't have something to use, I have a folder that I know I haven't posted before mm -hmm. and I grab it. And if say I'll take like the same picture, I'll just copy it and I'll do like black and white and flip it the other way and then add a text or something. So that way I always have pictures to use and I'm not sitting there like, well, I'm supposed to post a recipe tonight, but I don't have anything to post. So I don't really know what to post. Yep. That yep. has been so helpful because on days where I look like a troll, I <laughs> grab a different picture. <laughs> that Makeup 365 app can only do so much. <laughs> I love that. And I tell people, I'm like, you're always eating and take pictures yeah. of it no matter what. Like, yeah. You know. And it's to the point now where if I make dinner, Jason won't even touch the food until he's like, did you get your picture yet? <laughs> Melissa's always like, she says like now Mark will make one. He's like, I made a pretty plate for you. <laughs> for him to take but yeah, I started doing that and it's really helped. And then once I use it, I delete it out of the folder so that I'm not like posting the same picture over and over. That's a great idea. And um, in the social media, the seven day group, if you've watched that, they talk about like giving your Facebook a facelift and ideas for photos. And like, if you take a, a picture in the same spot in your living room every day, like go somewhere else and go outside or just get a different background because it's just kind of like, okay, it's monotonous. You know, if you take a picture in front of the same wall or shower curtain or whatever, every day, people are going to be like, what is this doing for me? It's your face. Okay, cool. So, um, make sure that you're switching it up, trying to get good lighting. Um, if you just a general tip, if you're taking a picture inside, um, and there's windows always face the window because that's always going to be the best lighting. Um, for food, I always take it outside and then I use vibrantly. Uh, if you can invest in one white plate or bowl, like cheap at Walmart for like three bucks. That looks really great in pictures for food. It just makes it a little different. Um, and don't, and just throw it in a filter because it's your business. So don't just be like, oh, it's kind of blurry, into, but I got my post done. Throw it into a fil uh, an app and filter it and, and brighten it up. Abby says aviary is good for food picks too. I haven't put it in aviary yet. Um, <clears throat> I would say um, my biggest tip for social media is that I always say, like, if people are stuck or don't know what to post about, like, think about what you're doing right now and post about it. Um, and, like, that's, that's something that, you know, I think people, like, people always say to Zach, like, oh, I feel like I know your wife already because of her, of her, the way she posts on social media or whatever they say. But, you know, they, everyone knows, like, you know, about our lives and the things that make us tick and things like that. So I guess like it kind of takes like following a posting schedule, you know, it's, it's a really good start for beginners, but then it kind of comes really naturally and, you know, putting your, your food and a fair mix of food, shake, fitness, life, and then kind of going from there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and just talking about things you do on an everyday basis. Like I'm always like looking around and like at the little quirks and things that, you know, like you posted today, April, that, that wall in your house mm -hmm. that you really love. Like it's, you know, that's something that you see every day. And, you know, sometimes you just have to really like, just look around, like, what do you do? Like, and then talk about that because people, when I'll start conversations with people, the, they know my whole life and they tell it back to me. So it's people really do follow you. Yeah. And that's kind of how I am too. I have like, and Debbie just said she doesn't really follow a schedule and I'm kind of guilty too. I, I don't always follow a schedule, but I do have, I like, it's my goal to at least once a day do a coach sprinkle post and at least 
twice a, do, a week do a join my team and once a week do a challenge group post. So that's for something that I, like, I just kind of have been doing it for so long that I am like, okay, this is going to be personal. I just kind of have it in my head. I don't really have one set that I have written down, but in the beginning, it's so, so, so important. Um, but I also do the, um, sorry. I no. also like try to follow like the the like theme days so like motivation monday transformation tuesday yeah. throwback thursday you know whatever it is like flex friday stuff like that because that kind of gives you an idea of things to uh stick to well, i don't know that i got lots of comments on the dead animal i saw on my walk yesterday <laughs> you're like it's like the stupidest stuff and you're like did you not see this coach post that I spent 45 minutes on yesterday? But you want to talk about the roadkill that I saw. Okay, cool. Um, and so my best tips that I can give you is don't be a robot when you're inviting people to your team. Talk and say, and I always, we always make fun of Sarah and call her her Sarah-isms. She's always like, you know, shortening words and being silly. Put your own personality into your coach post, not like, Hey guys, who wants to be hired? I'm now accepting applications. <laughs> like, that's so annoying. Don't be that way. Just be real. And start the, the coach post with why it's going to benefit them. Not like, join my team. I need five more people. <laughs> so why is coaching going to benefit them? Um, and I really like the book um, Contagious. I can't remember. Jonah something. Um, but that talks a lot about thinking about people's perceptive like perceptions and talking to them like kind of the diff Jonah Berger yeah it's kind of the difference between just being like girl you should totally do, do this and then being like girl I'm so excited can you imagine how amazing you're gonna look on day 21 like getting into their head kind of and so that's really what you want to be doing in your post is people are always thinking what's in this for me so make sure that you're explaining that. Um, and one of my biggest things that I, I had, um, did wrong in the beginning was I just tried to, I just tried to come across professional. I wanted to talk about how I was an exercise physiologist and I had my master's and this, da, 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 da. like who cares, April, you don't even need a cert certification to be a beach body coach. Shut up. Like, <laughs> so, um, I wanted to talk about how I, taught four boot camp classes and ran 10 miles and here's my broccoli I'm eating for breakfast. And people are like, you're annoying. Like, I don't want to be that. So, um, just be real. And if you had pizza, talk about it. If you fell off the wagon, talk about it. You don't want to be the coach that falls off the wagon every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Cause that's also annoying, but just show people that you're just inviting people and doing you. And if they want to join you, cool. If not, no big deal. You'll find, you'll just going to keep doing it anyways. Um, and that's very much, you know, just kind of, and look at coaches on our team and see how they're doing something. And if something strikes a nerve and you're like, that's awesome. Just take that and use it. Never copy and paste because it's not going to work and you're not going to find people that way because you're you and Sarah, Sarah, and that's not going to work if you're just copying and pasting something from somebody else. But 100% look at what other coaches are doing, get ideas from it and make it your own. Um, I love um, Brittany Leggett. I really love a lot of her posts in the beginning. I followed her a lot and loved how she did her coach posts and things like that. Um, and today she just shared how, for the first time ever, she shared about how she's had infertility issues. And it took her over three years to share her story. So, um, you know, you see people that are really successful and, you know, for her, she didn't want to share it. And that is something that's going to open up a whole new target market for her. So good for her for sharing that. But yeah, screenshot ideas. That's why a lot of times I try to share posts that I love from other coaches into our team page. And I encourage you to do that in your team pages. Um, go away, April. Um, but yeah. I was also going to say that I think that a big thing that when co making coaching posts, people like get held up about is that they, they're like, Oh, well, I haven't really had that much success or, you know, whatever. And I think that what was huge for me was as soon as I was an Emerald coach, which I was an Emerald coach because I signed my sister as a discount coach and my husband. So it was like real quick and just the first two people I can think of. Mm -hmm. And, um, I always talked about myself like I was a top coach. <laughs> so when I made posts, I was always like, 
my team, um, my tribe, my team, my team, my team. And then I talked about what I envisioned. And like, so when people would come to like, do like a sneak peek with me, it was always like what I envisioned and what I envisioned came to life because I projected that out there. And now like I do, I do have a larger team, but it was always, I always in my head, I like, yes, fake it till you make it. And I always say that. And I hate the way it sounds. Cause I feel like my team looks at me like fake it. I don't want to fake it, but like you are a top coach, put that out there and like you attract people cause you're confident and you will get there. That's, that's just how it goes. So don't be like, Oh, I've only made $5, but it's not about that. So, you know, always think about the big picture and what you hope to accomplish and things like that. And, you know, when I talked about, even if I had one client, I would talk about my clients mm-hmm. and my groups and their success and whatever. So, you know, there's a lot to talk about and just talk about the things that you see going on in challenge groups, because even if it's not your clients, it's a crew of people that you're part of. Yeah. And, um, Autumn is really good at this with her free groups. She's always talking about ask people too. Like she ran a, a free five day cleaning group and that's like kind of where I got my template because she had a great success and I was like, okay, well <laughs> tell me what you're doing. But then she makes posts like last, last time we did this free group, we had a combined total loss of 44 pounds and 72 inches or something. And she's like, and that's only from the people that even responded to me. So like, take your groups and don't just like do them be like, okay, like get information from them, whether it's a free group or whatever, make them give you that information. So you can use that as fuel for a post or whatever, or to promote it next time. Um, but like if you're a new coach and maybe you have one challenger and she messages you and she's down three pounds this week, it it can be a simple hat. It can be a simple post without even using a picture and be like, Oh my gosh, I just checked into my challenge group and one of my clients is down three pounds this week and I could not be more proud. Like hashtag best job ever. Like that's all you have to do. And people are like, I want to know how to lose three pounds in a week. So just do little things like that. It doesn't have to be like, my sister lost a hundred pounds. It doesn't have to be amazing, but people want to know what you're doing and they want to know that it works. So share that. Um, Danielle, I made $50 this week and so many people have made comments about how I probably make a thousand dollar a week. That's funny. (laughs) Um, okay. So any other questions or anything or any other tips or anything that you want to ask other coaches? Cause we have a ton of people that are really good with their social media. So if you want to ask them something or have any questions, feel free to do that. Does anybody have any questions? This was really good. I really I do. It. Okay. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my voice, I'm like losing it. Or what is it? Interest groups. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you? Okay. Um, does anybody do interest groups? Because I honestly, since we got the puppy, like I've had so many questions about puppies that I've been thinking about doing like a local interest group on Facebook and kind of like, I don't know, adding people to that. Does anybody have success with like starting their own interest groups? I would say for now, just join other rescue groups or things like that and participate and ask questions in them. And when people respond, interact with them and add them as friends. I don't think you need to take on that because people have already done that. Um, if you wanted to create okay. an interest group, like I, like Molly has been saying that she wants to create an interest group for like single women and like funny, you know, kind of like the woman hole kind of stuff like that. Um, and if you wanted to do that, fine, but I don't mm-hmm think that you need to create your own because I'm, I'm having success just in a German shepherd group already. So it's just a lot less work for you to just join one and focus on asking your questions, interacting with people. And when other people ask questions, um, interacting with them and just join a couple and you can post the comment in a couple ones, a couple groups you're in and see which one you like best and, you know, kind of go from there. I'm in a dog mom okay. and there's, there's a lot of people in it, but they've had to make several posts about not sh- posting your business because people are obnoxious with 
posting a picture of their dog right next to their Shakeology or posting a picture of their dog laying on their It Works blanket. So I've added people, like I went through and anybody that I see has golden retrievers, I friend them and then I message them and say, you know, oh, you're a golden retriever mama too. Me, you know, I'm, I am as well. I have two. How old are yours? And then I start a relationship. So I've probably added 20 to 25 people from that group and started building the relationship, but none of them, like I haven't pulled the trigger on them because I don't feel like it's there yet. But I, they comment on all my stuff. Any post of my, with my dogs on my page, they're commenting. So I feel like it's moving to where I can start inviting them without being salesy. What I would do is I always invite those kind of people that it's not going anywhere to a free group. And I don't really love our exercise groups. I have to be honest. I don't have a great conversion rate from them. They're awesome. And I have people that do them every month and they want nothing to do with Shakeology. So like, that's the kind of people that I attract. I'm like, okay, just keep doing your mountain climbers then. Um, So what I do love is the free cleaning group. And I do that the first Monday of every month. So if you want to join me on it um, when I do it in May, you can do that. And just what I would do is invite all of those people just kind of after you catch up again, hey, how's it going? Like, you know, I just want to tell you that I just love social media. I love how like, you know, we've connected through our dogs. And I don't know if you're interested or not, but I run free groups on Facebook all the time. And I'm actually doing a, a five day clean eating group on Monday or next Monday or something, you know, would you want me to add you? Cause I'm always looking for more people and it would just be really great for your, us to keep each other accountable, something like that. And because the, the free clean eating group is so great because we are plugging 21 day fix. If you just add them to the free fitness group, you have to do a lot more work. <laughs> that this month I've really been trying to plug in Shakeology and the 21 day fix. And I did a, I did, I did, I did a, what was it? Oh, I did an event to get people into the free group, and I had a ton of luck with that. And then I'm doing the swell bottle giveaway for anybody that goes from the free group through the 21 day fix. Good. But yeah, and then I did that. I did that with my clean eating group too. That's what I did. So far, there's so far there's the wants to do it. Wants to do it. Yeah, I've, I've just been, my free exercise group people, a bunch of like freeloaders that just want to do little workouts at home. So <laughs> I've kind of given up on that, but the clean eating group, I th- sold three challenge packs from that. So, um, and when you do clean, do free groups, talk about it on Instagram too. Post on Instagram. Um, a tip Tanner just did a feature account uh, or did a feature on Instagram, which is like a big account. Um, you can pay them to do a feature and she did a transformation photo and she's already, she had a post, a coach post up when she, when it went up and she's had it already. She said like six people that filled out her, her coach woofu form and stuff like that. So you can always think about doing that too. It's a little bit of an investment, but every time I've done that, I've, I've sold at least one challenge pack, sometimes more. So it usually is worth it for the amount of followers that you get. <sighs> Any other questions or anything else you want to share tips? Don't make collages. That's my tip for the day. (laughs) Just go back through my Instagram. You'll see what not to do when I first started. (laughs) April, can I talk a little bit about what I talked to you about, about really envisioning your why, because it's just like a game changer. And I know it has nothing to do with social media, but still. (laughs) Um, So today, and I'm definitely going to be sharing everything that I learned with um, you guys. But today I went, I had the privilege of going to lunch with a, basically a social marketing or a social media or what is it? (laughs) What's the word? Life coach? Network marketing, the uh, basically a network marketing guru who um, doesn't work because he's been so successful. But um, what we talked about today that really, really hit home for me and really made me realize why I was stuck in a rut and why um, my business isn't growing the way I want it to is because. Um, 
basically of myself, but uh, he asked me to, you know, he asked me about my family, what kind of family I grew up in, uh, you know, what they did for a living, what I went to school for, yada, yada, yada. And then um, he talked about, or he said um, that a lot of people, uh, majority of people see what they were brought up in the type that type of family or that type of income as where they're going to be forever and the idea of being able to break past that is really scary and um, I just wanted to throw that out there because I think that's the reason why so Coaching has allowed me to quit my full-time job, if you don't know me or who I am. Uh, I was a restaurant manager. I worked with April's husband. That's how we met. And both of us, not April, me and Matt, <laughs> um, were working about 65 hours a week. Uh, we didn't get paid overtime. We were salary, blah, 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 blah. Um, he introduced me to April, and the rest is history. But my big, hairy, scary goal was to be able to quit my management job. And I did that in about six months uh, from as being a coach. And after that point, my business fell off because I hit my goal. And I kind of got stuck like, okay, I did what I wanted to do. That's that. Um, and you need to realize that I'm still making about the same money that I was when I was a manager, but I need to realize that that's not my potential. And <laughs> yeah. Um, and you guys need to realize that too, that where you are right now or the type of family that you grew up in, regardless of whether you had a lot of income problems, if you're middle class, whatever, that's not where you have to be for the rest of your life. So don't take that and settle. Um, and then lastly, he talked about your why. And I know that April talks about this all the time. And whenever you're in a rut, she or your upline coach is probably always like, okay, remind yourself of your why. Um, your why has to be really, 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 really specific. If you just say, and this is what I was doing, if you just say, uh, one of the examples is, I want to be able to go to Italy. And that's what I told this gentleman. And he said, well, that's great. When are you going to go to Italy? And I was like, um, I don't know. And the idea behind that is because we were at a restaurant and every single person behind us probably wants to. <laughs> I'm in the restaurant business. That's what we call people. <laughs> um, but probably every single person behind you wants to go to Italy too. So what's going to differentiate you from them? So then he started asking me questions. When do you want to go? So I said, okay, I want to go in 2017. And he got down to what month do you want to go in 2017? Who do you want to take? Where are you going to stay? What places are you going to visit? Yada, 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 yada. That's what a vision board is. A vision board is not just you throwing a bunch of pictures on a screen and saying, Italy, car, whatever. So my homework assignment from him tonight, which I did, was I planned out an entire Italy trip for me and my mother. So mom, we're going to Italy in 2017. Um, and then one of my other things was I want to buy a new car. Now, I know these are all materialistic things. We talked about more in-depth stuff, too, but my, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but my next goal or my next homework assignment from him was that I need to go to the dealership of the car that I want to buy and I need to test drive it. So you guys really need to um, not limit yourself and make these things happen by doing your research and all of that stuff and... It was just really, really cool, like really cool because I was, I mean, my why was so generic. While it really did mean a lot to me, it was pretty generic. I literally made a vision board and I threw a bunch of pictures on there and that's all I did with it. I never did anything else with it. So, um, and Tanner, uh, I said that, I said I wanted a Range Rover and he was like, great, what year? And again, like you, uh, April was saying, it's all about vis visualization 
So I had to list the year. I had to list the color. I had to list the amenities that I wanted it, the upgrades, yada, yada, yada. And then finally he said, and how are you going to pay for that? And he told me that I was going to pay for it in cash in full. Like, so um, it was, it was really cool. Like really, really cool. So if there's one thing you should do tonight, it is do your research on your why, get specific, write a list of 10 to 20 things about one topic of your why, and then tomorrow night, pick another topic of your why and do the same thing. And that's it. Bye. I love that. And actually at Smart Success this past year, um, Shalane Johnson even said, like, I'm not crazy about vision boards because vision boards aren't the end all thing. Yeah, you can throw it up there, but how are you going to get there? And visualization is one thing, but reverse engineering and figuring out how you're going to do it is a whole nother. Um, so for me, like I made my computer background. Um, we, um, what did I say? I am a 2015 elite coach. And I think I did this in September and I like pooped my pants every time I opened my computer and looked at that. And I was like, no idea how that's going to happen. And so, fi and so finally, so finally, finally, one day I get into existence. So I, um, what I did was I wrote down, okay, who are my diamond prospects? And then what I started doing is I started messaging them. How can I help you? What coaches do you have that want to work the business? And then I started messaging their coaches. So you don't want to be managing your coaches. And Sarah can talk a lot about that topic is that you can't be doing it for them. You can't be, did you check your sponsorship drawdown? Did you do this? Did you do that? Da, 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 da. But you want to work with the willing, but at the same time, know when she hits success club every month. She doesn't need me breathing down her neck. She's got this. But what can I do to help her coaches hit Emerald? Because that's the part that your coaches struggle with a lot is duplication. Um, so the best thing that I did in, okay, so the best thing I did in 2014 was started getting on the phone with coaches and clients when I wanted to close the deal. That was a game changer. And I think I started doing that about the time that Tanner signed on. And I think she was one of the first people that I tried it with. And I was like, do you have a second to get on the phone? And like, I was at work, I already took my break break. And I was like, I'm going to go outside, talk to her on the phone. She signed up right there. And I was like, okay, this works. <laughs> so it's not like that every time. But that to me was like, that's never happened before. I need to start doing this. Um, and then in 2015 was getting involved with my coaches and their coaches. So those are two of, <laughs> that's how I was. I signed up the first day. I was like, okay, <laughs> take my money. <laughs> um, yeah, and Tanner says my phone background has all my debt listed out an elite on it. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, Debbie, or Debbie, um, Molly, if you don't do the test drive by the time our diamond retreat is, if you don't get up with him and do that, we can all do that. It'd be a, a field trip. <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to do this. Car has to be. <laughs> well, Tanner can take hers. Molly can take yours. <laughs> and I'll hopefully have a car that can fit a car seat by then. <laughs> um so yeah so any other anything else i really really love this call i really love i think there's a lot of really great things that are going to be helpful for new coaches um and then what's happening at 8 30 is the objections call so what we're going to do is go over any objections and i want this to get again be the same thing like an open um forum and when somebody says okay i get the objection of money and i want People always hear what I say, and it's kind of like your mom telling you to clean your room. Yeah, I got it, mom. Okay, so I want to hear from other people because the same thing from somebody else can sometimes click, and as annoying as that is for me, because I'm like, I have been telling you that forever. I'm just glad if it, if it strikes a nerve with somebody and it, it's like, oh, I never thought of that. So, um so that will be at 8.30. So if you can write down, if you're going to be there, if you, or even if you're not, if you can just comment on the post and anything that either you or your coaches are struggling with, just write it all down so I can make sure that we're covering all of it. <laughs> it's a shaken baby. Um, yeah. 
So I'm going to do my workout and then I'll see you back at 8.30. And um, if you have any questions or anything that you want covered, even if you're not going to be on the call, just make sure you post it and it'll be the same link and I will smell you all then.